Hello and welcome to the Tank Armor Guide for War Thunder. In this video, I'll be explaining all the different types of tank armor in the game, from the most basic sheets of metal all the way to active protection systems. Before we get started, let's go over how armor actually works. Each type of armor has what's called an armor modifier, which represents how much it can protect the tank against enemy shells. This modifier is split up into kinetic and chemical modifiers, which apply against our respective ammo types. You can find a full list of all the armor modifiers in the War Thunder wiki. I've left a link in the description for those who are interested. There's also the matter of angling. The higher the angle of impact, the stronger the armor. The formula to calculate the effective armor value is the thickness multiplied by the armor modifier divided by the cosine of the angle of impact. To give you a practical example, imagine a 100mm plate of armor with a modifier of 0.5. A tank shell hits the armor at a 45 degree angle. The result is an effective thickness of about 70.7mm. You got all that? Good, let's move on to the types of armor. First up is a homogenous group. Homogenous in terms of armor means the entire plate is made out of a single material. Basically, imagine a big slab of metal. There are three types of homogenous armor, and their differences lie in the manufacturing stage. Rolled homogenous armor is made by rolling a flat sheet of steel to a certain thickness. This results in a uniform and even plate. It's a pretty basic form of armor commonly found on World War II and early Cold War tanks, and it's pretty much the point of reference for all armor types due to its simplicity. Cast homogenous armor on the other hand is made by pouring molten metal into a mold and then casting it to the shape of the armor. When the molten metal is cooling off, it can create inconsistencies in the armor, which is the reason for the slightly lower modifier value. High hardness rolled armor is a variant of rolled homogenous armor that undergoes additional heat treatment to increase its hardness. The design is a double-edged sword though. While it does provide better protection against shells, the armor will fragment a lot more in the case of a successful penetration, thus causing more spalling. The next type we'll be looking at is spaced armor. One plate of armor is good, but what if? You had multiple. And what if you separated them a bit? Well, that's exactly what spaced armor is. This simple design is pretty effective against kinetic energy shells, but especially so against chemical energy ones. If the plates of spaced armor are thick enough, they can slow down kinetic energy shells significantly, which decreases their penetration power. Against chemical energy shells, the outer layer of armor can cause a premature detonation, which can nullify the shell completely. Alright, spaced armor was pretty cool, right? Now imagine, instead of just air between the plates, you put in even more armor. And this time, it's not only one type of armor. They're all made of different materials like ceramics, plastics, metals, and so on, sometimes with air in between. That's what's called composite armor, aka armor made of different materials. Each layer serves a different purpose. The ceramics shatter incoming projectiles, metals absorb the remaining energy, etc. The result is a very strong piece of armor with lots of stopping power against both kinetic and chemical energy shells. Tanks can also have additional armor like spall liners and screens. They serve to add an extra layer of protection against enemy projectiles. Spall liners are strong sheets of fabric, usually made from aramid fiber, that help stop pieces of fragmentation from damaging internal components. Composite and rubber fabric screens are external layers of armor that give an extra bit of protection to your tank. Now we move on to a more interesting group, namely reactive armor. First up is explosive reactive armor. It consists of a layer of explosive sandwiched between two metal plates. Like the name suggests, ERA reacts when the projectile detonates the explosives, which can disrupt or eliminate the incoming shell. Explosive reactive armor is highly effective against chemical energy shells, often nullifying them entirely. Against kinetic energy shells, it softens the impact so the actual armor can stop the projectile. Once the ERA blows up though, it's gone until you reach spawn, so keep that in mind. In a similar yet different fashion is non-energetic reactive armor. An ERA typically consists of an elastomer like rubber sandwiched between two sheets of metal. When the projectile impacts the first sheet, it causes a shockwave through the plate. This shockwave causes the rubber layer to bulge and expand, which disrupts the projectile's path. Unlike ERA, non-energetic reactive armor has no chemical reaction, is better against kinetic energy shells, and is still usable after multiple hits. Time to think outside the box, or rather, outside the tank. Active protection systems are designed to detect and neutralize incoming projectiles before they hit the vehicle. There are two types of APS, soft kill and hard kill. Soft kill APS, also known as infrared countermeasures, IRCM, or electro-optical APS, use infrared lights to disrupt incoming guided missiles. By jamming the missile sensors, this form of APS effectively neutralizes the projectile, causing it to veer off course and miss its target. This only works against 
semi-automatic command to line of sight missiles without electronic counter countermeasures though. If you didn't understand a word I just said, go watch my air to air missile guide and come back afterwards. On the other hand, hard kill APS works by destroying the incoming projectile before it can hit its target. It does this by using a series of sensors and radar arrangements to detect the incoming projectile. Then, a computing unit calculates its path and launches an explosive charge towards it, damaging or destroying it in midair. A complete nullification isn't guaranteed, but it'll take out most incoming chemical energy shells. Like ERA though, hard kill active protection systems can run out after a couple of uses. Last and least, we have modules like tracks, barrels, structural steel, etc. These are parts of tanks that aren't necessarily made for armor, but they can still have some stopping power. Here are the armor modifiers for those who are interested. And that about covers it. If you have any questions or you think I missed anything, let me know in the comments below. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.